Now, I have a very special guest here that I'm really looking forward to having a really cool conversation with. We have Jose Luis Lopez Jr. here on the channel. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I'm really looking forward to this. I know a lot of subscribers are going to be enjoying this content because we talk a lot about uh, uh, In the Heights and all the stuff that uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda has done. So this is going to be a really interesting conversation. So I'd love to uh, welcome you to the channel. And if you could introduce yourself, that'd be fantastic. Hey, hey y'all. Uh, I'm Jose Luis Lopez Jr. I'm a singer, dancer, actor, uh, actively on Broadway. And um, I have a pretty extensive history within the Heights and the Heights, like, like sort of came in and like changed my life, like in 2009. Um, I did the Broadway version of the production, but I've also done like other iterations of it. So like the first national tour, for example, we had a really like critically acclaimed first Nash. And I've done like really special uh, regional productions of it um, in like Los Angeles and in Miami. And um, I had the luxury of like, and the honor of like being included in, in the actual film adaptation of the movie, which is now in theaters. Everybody's like enjoying that. So it's just like the gift that keeps on giving. I'm obsessed with the show. Like the show, just like I said, like it just like changed my life. That is so wild. So you've been, it's been a while. It's been 12 years being involved in it. It's actually yeah. pretty wild. So can yeah. you go into like the, the, the process of how you even got into it, how it started? Like at first 2009, you know, get starting out with within the Heights on Broadway. How did that happen? Right, right. So like, this is actually like, I, I've only shared this story like one time because it's so crazy, <laughs> but, uh, but essentially like prior to auditioning for in the Heights, I saw they made a 30 second commercial for the in the Heights on Broadway. And I saw that like in passing randomly at this time I was attending new world school of the arts, which for, for, for those of you that, that have never heard of it, it's kind of sort of like the Juilliard of the South. Also, Alex Lacamoire, who is the musical director, the original musical director and conductor of Broadway, and also the, I think the executive music producer of the movie, shout out to Alex Lacamoire, love him, he's a, he's a genius. Um, he also went to New World School of the Arts and there's a couple other heads in the cast and even in the original Broadway cast that went to New World. So like a lot of us, like kind of like go through those realms. Mm -hmm. I was studying there and, and I found like, so I, so I saw the show 30 seconds, I like put it in the back of my brain. And then, because I was in school, right? So all of a sudden, I was on Craigslist, which I don't know what the heck I'm doing on Craigslist. Well, everybody was on Craigslist. It's like, this is like before, like yeah, Etsy. Yeah, exactly, sure. Before, like, all Absolutely. So like in like, in like craigslist.org forward slash like temporary gigs, <laughs> I see an advertisement for an open call for In the Heights. So I decide to go. And Lin-Manuel Miranda was there. Alex Lacamoire, music director, Thomas Kale, the original director, shout out to Thomas Kale, who's like killing it. And like pretty much all of the, Bill Sherman, I think Bill Sherman was there. They're all a part of, um, I think it's like public knowledge. They're, they're called Volt Voltron. Okay. Which I, which I love. I think it's so cool. That's one of the things about like Lynn that I thought was really cool. And it's even infused inside of the music of In the Heights. Voltron, which is, you said? Voltron. Okay. Like, like, yeah, so, like, like a transformer kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, and and one part of the Voltron that must be mentioned is um at the Andy Blankenbuehler who okay. is like the original choreographer for In the Heights. I hope that they revive In the Heights because like people need to see this show the show on Broadway. Like the movie is fantastic. Like Chris Scott and Eddie Torres Jr. Chore choreographically like did their thing. They took it up to this like level that's like wow, that's like really overwhelming. But like the nuance and like the intelligence and the mindset of like the the choreography on Broadway must be experienced. I think I think the world's gonna be able to experience it because, yeah. So I'd agree. Uh, I think I think that the movie is a great way to kind of re revamp it, not revamp it, but like kind of bring it back to into people's attention, like the forefront of people's mind, and kind right. of bring it back. I think it's a it would be a perfect segue to go right back into Broadway after that, right? So that is the craziest story that I've ever heard. Like working on Broadway from Craigslist is the craziest thing. And also like inside of that, like they, they were having me read because for the first national tour, I got a, a principal role, which was a graffiti P. I, so I played graffiti P in the first national tour. In the Broadway production, I got hired as an ensemble member because it, at that time I was a, 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 like um, crafting my versatility as a dancer. So I came in as a Latin dancer but they needed a guy that could do urban movement. So like, that's what kept me on Broadway. So I was in there reading for lack for, for, for the, for the whole team. Like, like I was like so green. I walked in there with a, with a, a, a rinky dink, 
like music, a uh, sheet music of like John John Legend's Ordinary People, which <laughs> I have a ten, I have, I have a tendency as a baritone to like sing songs that are like way too high for me. <laughs> so that so Lacamoire, being so amazing that he was, he came in and like he was like, hey, so uh, I think we want to just like what what do you need? And like transpose the music down to fit me. I thought that that was a gift because they don't do that uh, like in every room. Yeah. So but, yeah. So basically. Um, and I thank him for that because I think that that moment he allowed me to like arrive and like, and basically what would happen is that like that audition, there was like 400 people there. Wow. In and New so York city in, or where? where? No, this, this, so it, so new world school, of the arts is in Miami. I'm, I'm from a place called Hollywood, Florida, but like it's adjacent to, to Miami. Um, where's your family from? New York born and raised. That's why I, oh, you're, so I'm not from the city. I'm from long Island. But the that is why I, I've been enjoying In the Heights so much because like the nuances of New York and New York City and Long Island, like even the one the one line I heard today where where Lynn wrote in in, in the referencing East Talk it. I'm like, bro, I was just there yes. two months ago. Like you know, like I know That's, it. So all these little so nuances, cl- so clever. And then I'm, so clever. Oh, it's insane. And then I'm half Latino, so my mom's from El Salvador, so oh, I wow. relate to a lot of the uh, I, while it's Puerto I, Puerto Rican, right? Like most most of it, like. Um, yeah. it is, there's still a lot of Latin nuances in it that I just highly relate to. So it's very, very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing, man. Shout yeah. out to El Salvador. That's yeah, lit. absolutely. So that, that. that is such a wild story, man. I can't like, that is so crazy that, that it continues. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, that's my bad. No, this is, please. This is, this is too good. I want to hear. So, so inside of that, like they boiled 400 dancers down to, to who would get hired was two. Oh my gosh. So basically after the audition, like I just went back to my regular life. I had just like gotten a new apartment. We're like trying to furnish it where we got like a broom and a rag. That's all we got in this like, like crazy, like it was a, it was a great space, but like we were just living that college life, you know, hundred percent. And, and all of a sudden, like, like at that time, my boy was like, I, I, for some reason on the application, I put my boy's number on there. And so they called him. And he didn't get the voicemail, oh, but of, until like later. So it was like, like two weeks that passed by. Oh my and gosh. Then I, and then, and then all of a sudden he checks his messages and he's like, yo, I think you just got this job. And I was like, what, what can you like double check that? And when he went into the thing, it was, it was our company manager, a guy, a really great guy named Brig Bernie, who was like telling me, Hey Jose, we'd like to give you a job and you're going to have to move to New York like tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's pretty much my story. It's crazy, and then it's never been the same ever since. So shout out to your friend who didn't get pissed off at you for dropping out of that that apartment. <laughs> ah right, no, I replaced I replaced my roommate. Oh, okay, there you go, there you go. <laughs> no, that is wild, man. That is so cool. So it's just it's it's so cool how so many things work it out for you in that situation. You know, the fact that first of all, you got that, that appointment to get into that from Craigslist of all places, right? Craigslist. Guy. Then, then Craigslist. Alex Lackamore change, uh, you know, changes the key for you, works with you on the audition, you know, like who, who does that? And then the fact that you still got the part two weeks later after you didn't respond for two weeks that they waited that, for that, you it, is crazy. You know, you know what that's called? That's called, and I know it sounds a little corny, but that's paciencia y fe. Absolutely, a hundred percent. I love that reference, yeah. though. That is that's a good reference. <laughs> it's one of my fa- it's one of my favorites, man. That's a good reference. Um, yeah. that is so wild. What a cool story, <laughs> man. And and the part of the thing that I love the most about these conversations with with the people that I have on the channel is the uniqueness of everybody's story. Like everybody's yeah. story is so unique, and that's what I love to. I, so part of the reason I want to have these conversations is, is to inspire artists like myself that it's actually possible to make a career in the music industry you know or in in the arts industry right because you know when i started off people told me forever like oh you'll be one or or, uh, they didn't say that they said they said it's one in a million kind of thing what makes you different kind of thing you know like why do you think you're gonna make it it's hard to make all these things it's like okay look but i put in years of work you know Hmm. i put in hundreds of thousands of hours like hours and hours and hours and now Preach. it's starting to pay pay off. It's like, well, like if it, 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 it's working, you know what I mean? It's possible. And I want to share that with people say like, Hey, look, it, I'm not that I'm not some anomaly. Like I put in the work and if you put in the work, mm. it can happen kind of thing, you know? Absolutely. So what? that's what I love you... hearing these sto- your stories that like, but my story is different than your story. So it's interesting okay. to, to hear because it opens yeah. people's eyes up a little bit more being like, oh, oh, okay. I don't have to follow this one route to get, become a musician in the industry or an artist in the industry or a dancer in the industry. I can, there's so, I just need to do my route. You know what I mean? Right. That yeah. is so cool, so, man. 
So I, I, I know, I know, like I'm answer, I'm, I'm getting questions asked, but now I'm like super curious about like, <laughs> like more, more of your journey. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I dropped out of college in 2014 to be a, uh, to be a musician full time. I went to one year of music school. Um, oh, wow. From that, so like I wanted to be a musician in high school, but like I was like I wanted to be in a band, and I was like, well, I didn't have a band. So everybody around was like, okay, well, like that's great, but you don't have a band. So why don't you at least try college and stuff? So I was like, okay, I went to college, um, did a, a year of music school where I uh, studied in Queens, where I wanted to uh, be a, um, in Queens, New York, I wanted to be a, uh, a, a film, uh, score movies for film. So uh, nice. I was super wow. interested in that, super interested in like uh, Hans Zimmer. I don't know if you're familiar uh, with him. Oh, yeah. what? <laughs> so Amazing. B- huge fan of him and all that stuff. And then I started writing songs. I had been writing songs prior, but like I r- wrote and released my first song in like March of, of my first year of college. And after I released that first song, I was like, no way i want to do this full like this this needs this is it i need to do this kind of thing and then yeah. i wanted to promote that song so i was like okay i need to do i you know go to this class or do i write or like write this essay or do i write this song well my parents were paying for college so i wanted to respect them so i finished it but i was like I, i'm not gonna waste their money kind of thing so next semester i dropped out right uh and then from there just one day at a time i mean that was in 2014 so seven years ago one day at a time slowly do it playing gigs for no literally nobody getting kicked out of gigs you know what i mean like uh dude i i, I swear to you there's one gig i play at a restaurant i play this and i get paid so i was like hey whatever it's fine but like it, it, the, the humblingness of 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 literally going to a gig showing up and there is not a single person except the bar the bartender went to the back room because there was nobody there <laughs> i was just playing Yo, by myself that's... That's so rude, bro. That's it, so rude. So it's like, or like, I played another gig once for my where the it was a different genre that uh like it was my 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 stuff is a little bit more chill when I play acoustic live. So like they wanted like more Saturday night kind of vibe and stuff. So they would, they just were like, hey, here's a hundred bucks, but like, can you like pack up and get out of here kind of thing? So it's like, whoa. <laughs> so, but but just you, got paid. exactly right. Friday night. So, so you just keep. But the thing is, you just keep showing up. Right. Day after day after day after day, and then things finally pop off, kind of thing. And I feel like for any artist, like for us, to like place ourselves in those positions yeah. where you're like you're experiencing the rejection on such yeah. on, in such varying ways. Because I've never <laughs> experienced something like that. That makes like your 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 process like so unique. And like, but we all go through the process of like, like um, I call it like the the, the um unraveling of the finding of ourselves. Sure. Because every every experience is going to be like valuable right but like what it actually means for us in the moment is sometimes full out rejection like like getting a hundred dollars and getting sent to the side or having somebody be like hey uh why you're auditioning on broadway and you'd be like hi uh, wait can, are you gonna get the chicken chipotle from panera oh, like yeah. in front of you sure. in front of you and you're lit or sometimes you're not but it doesn't matter like like each of those people get to experience yeah. the yeah the value of like the process because i think as artists as well like perseverance is the name of the game. A hundred percent. Couldn't agree yeah. any more than that. A hundred percent. It is perseverance yeah, so. is the biggest thing. And that's what I think defines people that don't make it in the sense of they, 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 they don't have the ability, like they, they give up or they don't have yeah. the, the, the resources to, to persevere. Cause some, sometimes people like you have a kid when you don't expect to have a kid. So you can't persevere anymore in that aspect. You know what I mean? Or yeah, I think those two, two aspects, either they give up too early or like life gets in the way and they, they don't pursue it. I'm, I'm picking up a vibe from you that you're like a mindset guy. hundred percent. So like, yeah. So inside of that, like also remember, like, like you, you are what you think. Absolutely. So you become what you think. So, it's, so like inside, like what, what, what we see that that's happening with people that like, maybe like don't make it or like struggle to like make it is that like somewhere along the path, whether it's like, um, discouragement from 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 rejection whether it's lack of resource like you were mentioning or whether it's like like let's keep it real like shout out to everybody out there because everybody's unique but like lack of ability or like something like like everything is so subjective but like inside of that like you choose to believe that you can become as long wait hold up because the lord (laughs) (laughs) you preach (laughs) it i love that that is funny so inside of that, like that something amazing. happens where, where, where people forget, like they, that like they forget that, like, like they can become anything that they want yeah. and whatever they actually do decide to believe in, they actually will. So, and know. even on top of that, even you talked about talent, like I was definitely like 
not the most talented person in the room. I I just put in stupid work. You know what I mean? And I think that it's, it's yeah. continued. It's that continued process of just believing that think something is possible and having you know the faith for that something to be, to come through. But that is Absolutely. so true. And I heard a quote that to, to relay on what you just said that you are today who you thought and what you thought yesterday. You know, so right. it's a summation. Absolutely. Oh yeah, oh that's nice. Like so, that. So it's good stuff man so I, that is that is such a fascinating concept and i love that so i would love to hear your, part of your process of what it's like on broadway as a dancer and even as your parts that you've done so whether you want to talk on the dancing whether you want to talk on the singing and acting side like what is the the regimen of a of a broadway performer so you know like on broadway especially because of the fact that like broadway has like diversified in such a crazy way on so many levels but i will focus on the level of like what is required from the performer. Okay. When, when Broadway first came out, you always had like the chorus and you always had like a featured singer. But the reality is, is that there was an era, we're talking Fred Astaire, we're talking um, Gene Kelly, we're talking, oh man, I can't believe I just forgot my girls. But you know, uh, I'll, I'll remember them. Uh, Debbie Allen, Cheetah Rivera, Rita Moreno, like these legends that paved the way, they're triple threats. And so when I was informed by theater, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a triple threat. I knew that my bread and butter was going to be dance. I knew that my way in was going to be movement. Mm. Once I got, in, yeah. So once I, I got in there, you know what I mean? I see so, where you're going. But my ultimate goal was never to like get in as a chorus member or as a dancer and stay there because I had ability vocally and that ability was encouraged. And I had the courage to place myself in rooms and in spaces where even if you're considered like the best dancer in the business, like the minute that you step into in, in front of a creative team and you say that you're going out for a, for a singing role, they're not, they're not looking at you as like, Oh, a dancer that sings now immediately you're placed in, in the land of like Joshua Henry, like you're placed in the land of Edina Menzel, you're placed in the, in the land of like the great singers and you got to compete up there. Oh, interesting. Sure. Yeah. So, so I was ready for that challenge because I know that I can do it. Hmm. And so, so basically the regimen for me was always, it's always about practice. It's always about um, development. It's what I learned later because I, I, man, I got to New York as a little backpack kid from, from, <laughs> uh, from a Spanish beachy hood. So like, and I'm proud of that, that space, but I was undisciplined. I don't know what the heck I was doing. I could sing a note and I could hit a step, but we had a long way to go. So like later I learned that like, it's not just about what you do, it's about who you are. So like inside of that regimen, like it was about how could I like bring the best versions of myself into the space because the audience deserves it. Sure. Like the, aud the audience is the one that's paying like on Broadway, like someone like Hamilton, or, like it's setting the precedent for like the thousand dollar tickets and all that stuff. But in the hindsight, like was, was charging, was charging their, their rates and people were paying for it and showing up and selling those th that theater out. I mean, they won the Tony in 2009, 2008, 2009, won like five of them. I think. Wow. Shout out to Lemonel Miranda. <laughs> it's insane. Shout out to yeah, just just the whole team. Um, so 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 inside of that, I knew. So that's like my process, right? I focus on my craft. I make sure that I know my stuff, and I bring the best version of myself. And that's pretty much the only regimen that I need. Yeah. Because I'm already I'm already beyond competition. Mm -hmm. There's no competition. Because nobody can do what you can do. Sure, absolutely. That, when you when you look at that, like that is a great way to, to look at uh, to the important like what you're talking about. So like, you Ooh. know, you talk about how you say, you know, oh, I'm, you're an artist, you're a singer, you know, you, you all the stuff that you personally do, and then you have like, but you you say, oh, but there's a hundred other, a thousand other people that do that. But the truth yeah. is, but there isn't. Because yeah, there's okay. only you that do the way you do it. You know, your specific timbre, your specific rhythm, your specific, you know, that is a great way to, to think about yeah, it. Bro. Absolutely. Nobody has, nobody has your spirit. Nobody has your, your, your being. Nobody has your, your face. Nobody has your, like, not exactly. exactly. That is such, so like, such a great point. Yeah. And I think it's a downfall that a lot of people face when they get to New York, which is like inside of inside of the rejection that's already there. It's like built into the system. I don't know if we're ever really get over that. That's something that we have to like do because the shows are, are requiring such specific energy. that You've got to be selective. They want the best of the best. Sure. So. It's like, so, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, continue. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, So like inside of that, I think what people get wrapped up in it is like, yeah, OK, you got to play the game. But then like now they start like like 
thinking about the rejection of the creative team and then like comparing themselves to sure. everybody in the room. That is it's so an, freeing when you realize that. That's such a great point, man. That's actually, I love that. I, I got to start thinking that way. That is such a great point, man. I love totally. that. Nobody. J not nobody could do what Jacob does. Exactly. I that well. I, I don't. What I, was, <laughs> I was agreeing. <laughs> Let's move on. I didn't mean it to come off like that, but that's funny. Uh, but that's a great okay. point, though. I love that. That is such a yeah, great bro, point. It's true. It's true. <laughs> especially funny. especially because of the fact, and you can relate to this, because like on your YouTube channel, you are you are like expressing yourself in a medium that like let's say like like let's say I do this tomorrow. Which, by the way, I'm not coming for your gig, so you don't have to worry about uh, hey, me. <laughs> but we'll do it differently, so come for it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not like when you know who you are, like, like you, you ain't got to worry about that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That is such a great point. I, I love that, actually. So one of the things you said that's very, very fascinating that I think is a slight difference between the music industry and maybe the performing arts industry is you said that if you are a dancer on Broadway, as soon as you start to sing, you are now considered – you have to compete with the singers of Broadway, which is yes. fascinating because if you are – you know, a guitarist or a singer, let's, let's say a singer, you know, on, on, in, in the music industry and you start to play guitar, it's not like you're being compared to, you know, John Mayer all of a sudden, you just now know how to play the guitar. You know what I mean? Right. Maybe, maybe a little bit vice versa where it's like, you know, if you're a guitarist and you try to start singing, okay, maybe you're starting to kind of get, get yeah. compared to some of these, these singers, but I still though, like, it's like, if you're a great guitarist, it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to be that great of a singer. You know what I mean? Like there's a plenty of those, sure. plenty of examples of those where I feel like that is Absolutely. a distinction between the performing arts like that, like Broadway and, and stuff like that compared to that is very yeah. interesting. I, I didn't think about that. That is fascinating. That, yeah. You're yeah. I'm interested by your point too. I didn't actually like really fully realize that, but yeah, you're right. I guess like, like you don't really have to, you're not, there, there's not the same comparison on Broadway. Like it's totally there. Well, there is another realm where it is similar, which is if you're a dancer or a musician and you want to become like an actor. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'd say I'd agree with that. I'd, yeah. Now they don't great. care. They don't yeah. care that you hit in it. Yeah, exactly. They're like, do you know how to act? <laughs> like, you Absolutely. know what I mean? So I, I, I look at it. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go for it. Go for it. I was going to change. I look, at, I, look at a proper, I look at it as a proper challenge because Absolutely. like, 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 I think it's Drake that said it. He said, so you can see, um, and my dreams are who I'm racing with. So you can see I'm pacing it so that I'm always chasing it. Like if we, if we focus on the process and not the destination and you have the mindset that you can become anything that you want, you can become anything you want. And you stop rushing yourself, right? That is so important. It's like, okay, I don't have to be there tomorrow. Paciencia y fe. <laughs> and he's the goat saying that yeah, exactly so this is a question from one of the subscribers this is a cool question this says um she says did you have a mentor or how did you improve your craft like did you train with anybody or like did you is this all self-taught oh man i like i don't think that i would have made it without a mentor okay like agreed like i have months i have mentors on multiple levels but in the realm of 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 like art my mentor is a man by the name of Diego Salterini. He's like an Italian, like Chicago jazz, 80s dancer. Fantastic dancer. Big old guy. <laughs> Extremely handsome. Shout out to Italians. <laughs> uh, he taught me everything that I, everything that I needed to know about not be, not only being a great dancer, because I had to catch up, man. Like when I, by the time I got to my freshman year of, of my, my art school, there was one older older a classman named rashad and i forgot his last name shout out to rashad i'm glad that rashad was there because i had like a merit that i that i wanted to meet and then when i met him i i no longer like considered him competition in that mm -hmm. space and i think it was because of a lot of things that diego started placing in my mind at that time about like highlighting like my uniqueness rashad mm. was br brilliant I'm glad that I never got to the space where I had to, you know, I have some, at one point he became like my school brother. So like, I'm glad that I never got to the point where it was like, Oh, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to show girls you ah, marbles on the floor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause there's, there's also that. So like Diego Salterini was like the one that like got me ready. My three teachers at that time, Hannah, Hannah and my, and my other teacher, Joe Matos, shout out to Joe Matos. Uh, she, one's in New York, one's in Miami beach and Diego's also Miami beach. Um, they got me fast tracked to get into college. So like if it wouldn't have been for the mentors, I never would have went to the Boston Conservatory, which was which was my first school. And at the Boston Conservatory, I didn't know where I wanted to place my ability yet. Mm. Like I knew I wanted to dance. But while I was there, do you know Joe Jackson? 
I know the name, so continue depending on who you're talking about. Because that's he's a super like, he's like, genu- uh, uh, gener- generic name. <laughs> generic name. <laughs> hey, Siri, who's Joe Jackson? Here's some information. Oh, wow. She nailed it. Uh, let's see. Who is that? <laughs> It said, David I- Ian Joe Jackson is an English musician and songwriter. He has spent years studying music and playing clubs. He scored a hit with his first release, Is She Really Going Out With Him, in 1979. I don't know if that's the same Joe Jackson. But thanks, th- <laughs> thanks, Siri. You're thanks awesome. Thanks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, in any case, what I remember Joe Jackson is, is like Joe Jackson is like an early 90s, like I want to say like VH1 pop rock artist, okay. which I love, VH1 pop rock artist. Sure. And he did an original work at the Boston Conservatory called Heaven and Hell. Basically, what he did was he took the concept of the seven deadly sins and he made them into like musical manifestations. It was br- a brilliant idea. And then the show had a guy named, um, I forgot, uh, uh, I, I know the actor's name, but I forgot the name of the actual uh, character. And I played Mephistopheles, who was supposed to kind of like be like the devil and stuff, but we don't really do all that. <laughs> Uh, so inside of that, I, that, that was my first opportunity where I got to use my dancing as like a story to tell stories. This Interesting. Time. And the applause was just crazy. So like, I was like, oh, God, I could get used to this. <laughs> and, uh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and like and then musical theater majors, because, you know, at the Boston Conservatory, you're split up by you're split up by, by disciplines. So they would come out to be like, oh, my God, I love your work. And I was like, oh, my God, more, more, more of this. Sure. Not the not the, not the big mind the mind thing it was just like wow like this is a part of what i want to do i want to tell stories i want it to impact people mm. and i want to be like well known for it absolutely that's great that is such a cool story absolutely yeah so that so to answer that i'm sorry i'm long-winded so to like the short answer is like diego Saltarini when i was in <laughs> high school but like that's that's like my my contribution absolutely i couldn't agree more in the sense of like it is i think it's very important to have your like mentors in life whether wh- whatever that may be you know what i mean and and, and interesting enough I, I you know some of the the biggest mentors on my in my life i never even met you know spending hours and hours and hours listening to their podcasts or watching their videos oh, wow. you know what i mean yeah like, it's maybe maybe not necessarily a mentorship but i've learned tremendous amounts of things from people that like you know but that is absolutely. that is so cool so Question for you, as as a, a professional dancer, I uh, am a horrific dancer. What is the best way to get started? I can make the music, but I can't keep the beat for my life, bro. Jake, Jacob, you can't tell people that. I, I have to, because if it ever, if you ever see me, it's like, oh, that's an embarrassment. So, my wife, you know who, my wife, who is not Latin at all, like no, like no Latin inside of her, is. Huh? a better latino dance latino dancer than i am you know and it's like okay, okay. yeah at, at the spanish right. parties and my Sp- my Del- the salvadorian parties i'm like i'm being shown up by my my, my wife and it's like who has hey, no bro. latin no. in her i'm like it's embarrassing so where do i start it is it, all right so i'd say like it, like like what is your general interest as to why you want to dance like is it because because i don't like, want to be the be... guy standing at the party that looks like a moron because he's like ki- looks like a robot <laughs> And I want to have fun. Yeah. And look, everybody's having so much fun just moving her all around. And I'm just, I'm self-conscious of it because I know I'm terrible. Well, you know what? You got to take a, 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 you have to take a page from Fat Joe. And what he shout says. Shout out to Fat Joe. That's a deep reference. Shout out, shout out to Fat Joe. I live in the Bronx that I live in now. I actually realized that I live in the same neighborhood that Fat Joe and Big Pun are from. Big Pun. Another, wow. Another deep reference. Yeah, so Knights in Bennett Park, bless them, big pun tapes. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to in the Heights. Um, so inside of that, wow. like, I would say, like, like a two-step. So, like, as long as you got, like, like, as long as you're able to, as long as you're able to rock, one, two, one, two, one, two. I will show you, like, like, I can show you, Sam. <laughs> now, now, my headset, like, won't really let me do this, but, like, just a two-step. So if you just two-step. Just at like you have a, you have a drink. You're at your you're you're at your like your family's like your cousin's christening or whatever, <laughs> or you're you're at a baby shower. Whatever song comes on. So if it's like in lights, I flip the lights, I'm two stepping. So inside of that, then let's say like like what's like a famous like a Salvadorian song? Uh off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh-huh. We, we listen right, to so Latin like, music in general. Daddy Yankee so, is not Latin Salvadorian, but the, but he's got that classic so reggaeton. That, so Daddy Yankee. So you got. Yeah. 
Whoa. Um, <laughs> so, so keeping the two step. So, so I can keep the beat. Keep a two step. So I can keep the beat, but I am rigid as a stone. So what do you do for that? How do so I, then I, what I So what I would decide, what I would, I would encourage you to do because you're not going to be able to get around the fact that like you have to go to class. I would encourage anybody out there that is interested and you specifically too, Jacob, like that wants to get better at dancing to like reach out into your communities and find like a studio. There is, there is an amazing dance teacher that's out there that in spite of the odds, and we can relate to this, opens up a dance space. And they're always like looking for new people to bring into the fold. Um, hold on, because there's going to be a car in the background. <laughs> uh, so, yo. <laughs> so, <laughs> so inside of that, I would say like, like that's the only way you'll get loosen, loosened yeah, up. I like, guess that's what I need to do. Yeah, you got to just get the fundamentals. I wish that I could give you like a one thing <laughs> that would be like amazing. Well, that is the one thing. The one thing is the go to class step. <laughs> or the two step. Yeah, go, or, or the two step. So you guys, so you got something you can do on your own? Two step. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a professional dancer, but I do not dance at clubs. Why is that? Well, I don't know. I just like, I like being like more chill and like laid back and stuff. Unless like Rihanna plays, <laughs> then it's on. Then it's on. That's <laughs> funny. So, so she just gets me moving. Like now that now I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like if they put, if there's a DJ that has the right playlist and Rihanna is included in that mix, <laughs> that gets me out on the floor. But like, usually I like to like lay back. So that's why, you know, I take, I take the position that I take, but, I, love but get, I would love to see like content of you going to class. Uh, you know what? I think that that could be cool content, especially because like, yeah. then I'm playing on, cause there's this country artist. I don't, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but my wife loves watching his, the videos and stuff and talking because he puts this song on or starts playing his country song, you know, this pop country song, but he has the moves, man. And it like, everybody yes. loves it. And it's like, oh, I, I need to start being able to do that where I can just break it down on my, I'm not talking about, you know, being a professional dancer, but like not looking like a moron kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, no, man, you good. Like if you get into class, you'll be like super good. Yeah. And then also there are certain spaces, especially because you're in New York, like you can go and, um, here, let me actually just like shift again. Sorry. Um, um, you can, there's places in New York that you can go to that like you can take, they'll teach you in the beginning, especially inside of the world of like Latin styles, salsa, merengue, bachata, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that you go and take class and then that night they have a social and you stick around for the social. So you go to class and you don't invite your wife until <laughs> the social. Ah, and, okay. And then, and then when she gets there, you're doing salsa in the middle of the dance floor, but like, oh yeah, you thought that you got it? I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love so that. So that's like a win-win. For sure, absolutely, man. I, that'd be that'd be fun. And it, it could be a business write-off. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm super curious what the process of like filming a movie looks like to segue back into to, um, your, your craft. Like how do you, yeah. what, is that, what does that even look like? What is the, the different scenes and how does that process like look like? So in In the Heights, I had the I had the luxury of being a, a part primarily in the club. So um, probably in the next couple of days on my Instagram, I'm gonna post exactly the moment it, uh, that I did. You see the movie already? Not yet. No. Ooh, so what are you doing? You don't want you're gonna wait so you can go to the theater? Yeah. So actually, so I've been I've been breaking down the songs on my channel, and then once I finish this all the whole uh, soundtrack, then I'm gonna actually do the, the um, oh oh great yeah fantastic movie. fantastic. Um, so basically, I got hired primarily in the club, and the process is a little grueling. It's a little, a lot different than than theater for obvious reasons. Like, like in theater, you have I feel like more stages of the process, whereas okay. movies, like you come into the you come into the game the first day. There's fifty thousand people in the room, nobody knows anyone. Well, actually, that's not true. Like everybody knew everybody, but I knew very little. <laughs> because it was it, it was technically outside of outside of my world. A lot of like the most talented social dancers got hired for this job but because it was inside my wheelhouse i went to the audition and i got it so that was really really fantastic um we learned some of the hardest salsa choreography in my life a lot my life shout out to Eddie torres jr he's uh, 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 he was the associate choreographer for the latin portion of uh and uh, multiple a uh, carnival um anything that required the essence authenticity of latin movement that's Eddie torres jr he's 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 brilliant um so basically we went, we got like five or six days to record it or to, to rehearse it. And then we end up going to the location and on the location, we're there for maybe about two days prior to shoot day. 
Like you have one process when none of the creatives are there. And then all of a sudden on set, eventually John Chu makes his way out. And he likes to like, look at stuff like on like an iPad and like go around. He's like, so like excited and like kid, like, like shooting. So that was really fun to watch. Lynn would pop his head out here and there and like make jokes and then like run back to video village. Video Village also, by the way, is like this like little area that's like like separate from everything where like people, producers, very important, like VIPs and stuff are back there like looking at all of the footage of what we're shooting. Really interesting. Yeah, it's that's really, really cool. Very interesting. I've, I've only been inside of a Video Village like one time. Um, it's like, it's, and it's always like elusive when you're on set, like you all, like on different movie projects that I've done, like you never, you always forget that it's there, but it's, it's, it's on every, every project that I've done. So, so. We rehearse for like two or three days. John rehearses with his director of photography, all of the camera shots. Mm. And then you have, I think we had two days to shoot the club. And the rest is like, good luck. It's also pretty amazing how much work goes into that one, a single scene. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. right there is two I mean, full days of recording, you know, the filming. And, and then not even talking about the editing process, but it's like, it is, people don't realize the hours and hours and hours and days that go into a whatever a 12 minute scene or however long it is it's it's crazy it takes so much effort to make a film and we had maybe about eight or nine sections because the club i think is about five minutes long so you have all the different sections you have the different verses and you have the different musical breakdowns and so each of the sections you're probably shooting and and this one and on in the heights like it was like the least amount of takes that I've ever like like had. Like I've been on a set where like we've done like 10, 12 takes of the same thing. In the Heights, we probably got got through it maybe like in three takes. So like each of the sections w- took three, um, yeah, yeah, three major takes. Then from there, like like you just go home. Like like that's it. Like you you put it out on the dance floor, and then you see like the magic once John puts his puts his touch on it and the editors like do their thing because you know you, a movie is nothing without its editor shout out to the editors out there sure Absolutely. yeah like they're they are the unsung heroes um and so like yeah that's pretty much the process see you've worked yeah. in, on several different movies i was looking at your imdb so you were uh i do my research man i do my research oh my god <laughs> I, want, I want imdb yeah you didn't know that no, I totally knew that. Oh, okay. Cause, <laughs> I was going to say, like, because I learned recently from another interview that you have to pay to have a headshot up there. So I was like, so, yeah. somebody's paying for you to have a headshot up there. <laughs> I think my manager was the one that opened that, so that is actually a thing. But I went up there and I, like, turned my thing into IMDb Pro because, granted, I fully embraced my name, Jose Luis Lopez Jr. And, but, like, that took a while because my name is so common <laughs> that it's like, how do you make, like, how do you make Jose Luis, Jose Lopez feel special? And like, I went a long time without like not, not really liking my name. And like, it was really great space to arrive to, to like own my, own my name. So mm-hmm. like, and it was about embracing the whole thing. Jose Luis Lopez Jr. Please say to Jr. Like that's, that's kind of like how I approached it. So like on my IMDB, I decided to like go for like the, uh, uh, I wanted to find a ways to like, like be, uh, get seen and like IMDb is such a great space because it's all official it's in the union and like when people search for you you actually like come up <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so you have been I, I saw that you had been in a couple movies in a, couple, a movie that's coming up right it hasn't been released yet right the newest one or has it was just released I'm, I'm forgetting uh, a blank on, on the name of it but um well, uh, well, well yeah you're, you're, you're on you're spot on there it's not a film it's a television show okay it's called D- David Makes Man okay so that is Terrell Alvin McCraney, the producer of Moonlight. Like he got, he went from the film, which was Academy Award winning to a television, um, like I don't want to say manifestation of Moonlight because it is not, it's like so much more. Um, but but I had the honor of working season one and season two on that wow, one. Cool. So I think, I, think, I think that's popping up on the IMDb okay. as a dancer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious, like you can go into as much or as little detail as you feel comfortable, but I'm curious, mm-hmm. like the... Um, the it can is making a living off of it kind of thing is it is it sustainable is it hard i i just don't know anything about it so i'm super curious on that aspect yeah like the short answer to that is yeah like on broadway you can make a living and not only only can you make a living you can have a good a great a great life like if you're in the right show i don't want to talk i don't want to talk dollars because that's not really my thing but like you can make a, a great living 
which is, now, is fascinating because like it's to some degree i'm, I'm curious on myself like I'm, oh, where do these places get the budget sometimes i think about like these movie things like outside of even like when a movie has a hundred actors, it's like, oh my gosh, everybody's getting paid somehow. So like, it, it's that's why a movie costs fifty million dollars to make. But I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like, like every single film that comes out and is like a success, a success is always off the off of the back of what's already been. Like Hollywood is an institution inside of this country. So like, like we're the creators of that genre, and so inside of that, like, there's a lot of guys that made like a lot of money. So, and like money that we can't words that's not even fathomable. Sure. And, and so, and also they're making, they're still like, it is, and, and, and it's on the backs of the people, right? Because it's like the people are the ones that got to go and support your film. Sure. So that gets recycled back into the next films that yeah. you do. And as you have something the craziest, like what was the last thing that I, that I think, I think, um, I don't know what the full budget for in the Heights movie was. I'm interested to know that number. Should I ask Siri? Go for it. We'll see. Nah, we'll, nah, nah, we'll I'm see. Good, I'm good. You don't want to know, or you do want to know? Nah, I don't have my Google Assistant. My Google Assistant is like is like a lot more lit. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, actually, Noah, are you googling? I am right now. Okay, I'm here for In it. In the Heights movie budget, fifty-five million dollars. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Holy, so fifty-five million dollars, guy. That's a lot of money. That is a lot. Well, when you put put that in perspective, it's like I can see why everybody gets paid. <laughs> Yeah, and it's unionized, so like we're covered. Okay, like, so that's like a great point too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now something to consider as a dancer, at least, or like a, a, even as an actor, like a supporting actor or stuff. You know, not everybody is going to be like the big star. Mm -hmm. We're still going to try though, but like you, not everybody will 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 become that. And mm -hmm. so like inside of that, like you got to be very just smart about the jobs that you do. I think and and believe why you had that's how May screwed up. That's Kanye. Oh my goodness, he was so good. In any case, um, don't leave. Wait, is that the reference that I wanted to make? Uh, 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 uh. In any case, what I really am trying to say is um, you got to like be super selective about the jobs that you're going to take because in certain realms inside of the, the, the movie industry, it's hard to maintain um, momentum. Whereas on Broadway, if you can land the job and the job is open-ended, you could, those kids that are in Lion King on Broadway, those kids that are in Wicked, mm -hmm. those kids that are in Chicago, some of them, my sister-in-law is an original, like one of the original heads of the cast of Chicago. She had a job for 10 years. Yeah. You could become a millionaire on Broadway. Yeah. yeah. But you're saying it's different than in the, mo in the movie industry. But in the movie industry, I'd say it's a lot harder because – you know, you have to, relationships are everything in this business, especially Absolutely. inside. Dude, you are the like 50th person to say that. And it's because it's true. People have to realize that it, that it's, it's relationships and probably more, it's like work ethic and relationships and then maybe talent. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is so important. You, the, who yeah. you know, and then how you treat the people, you know, absolutely. Because once, more. What, and if you're one of those people that are able to establish positive relationships, you have a higher probability of like making it through with consistent work, you know? Mm. So, but, it, but it's, it's a mixed bag because like, there's only so many slots that you have to sure. fill. Not, not every film that comes out has like 20,000 dancers in it, like in the Heights. Sure. That opening number is so many people on the streets. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing for like a lot of these uh, uh, dancers and performers that are out there, but not every job is like that. Sometimes you'll have a job where they, they got seven dancers and the seven dancers are going to are going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they go through a list of like 300 dancers to pick the sure. seven. So, and then that job could be a single day shoot. Sure. So, do you, so I'd say it's a lot tougher. Do you have in, a preference in, in between working with like movie and television versus Broadway? Or you just um, love I'm a broad, both? I'm a Broadway baby. Okay. So it's like Broadway brought me into the fold. I, I have a love for film and television as an actor and as a dancer because of the because of the, the role models that I've had, like the Gene Kelly, I would love for that to come back, the triple third to come back for the for the screen. And I think Anthony Ramos is like paving the way for that because that boy can sing, that boy can act, that boy can hit a step. He's genuine, authentic. Like, where they do that at? <laughs> like it's not fair. Yeah. But it is totally fair, man. Like, I'm glad that he's there and I'm glad that he's like, now he's become, he becomes like a young role model. And that's like what I want to do, like in, on, continue to do on Broadway. Cool. Like, I'm, I I'm really that. happy where, where I am. Yeah. I like that. That's really yeah. cool. So what, what are some of the aspirations that you have? I'm curious. What, like, where do you see yourself wanting to go? 
<laughs> oh, thank you for asking me this question. All right, hold up. There's another car coming. Uh, so, uh, well, you got to wave to them just like you did to the last person. <laughs> that's my little brother. He thinks he's real cute because he's rocking my my, 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 uh, my Yankee fitted, but not the blue and white one. It's the black and, like, orange one. Oh, okay. I like yeah, that. It's because I, because I have an oddly shaped head, and so, therefore, like, that hat makes my, my head look good. <laughs> Um, in any case, um, I think for me, like the biggest dream that I have on Broadway right now is to play Fierro in Wicked. Okay. I love that. That's all. I love the, speci- the, speci- the specificness, however you pronounce that properly. The super yeah. specific dream. That is cool. I like that a lot, actually. I, was, I, I, I know who Fierro is. I've been like the bad boy that has to be reformed. Like I just understand. And Wicked is one of my favorite films. Like I've said that in a pre- in a past interview that like I've I like know everybody that I need to like make it happen, so I'm just like taking it a step at a time, because there's like there's step there's like um steps up on this journey, and so therefore like like there's an experience that's gonna happen that you know I'm gonna I'm really excited to share uh, with everybody, uh, especially like heads that are in the theater industry, and in that space I'll be able to begin like what could eventually be, and who knows maybe beyond Fierro there's like greater roles. But like everything right now, out of the, out of the roles that have inspired me, especially because there's never been a Latin Fierro. I love it, and that's a crime <laughs> because we can do it. Absolutely. So, 100%. um, so yeah, I'd say if there's one, it'd be probably Fierro. That's cool. Has there yeah. been has there been previous or is there a specific moment in your career where you're like, this is the moment where I feel like I've quote unquote made it. That's, uh, that, that's got to be the, the, the moment that I arrived at the stage door at, at the Richard Rogers in the Heights, where Hamilton is now in the Heights was there first. And I, I show up with like two bags and I open the door and it's Chris Jackson. <laughs> and I, I don't know if he remembers the story, but um, he like opened the door. He's like, yo, and like helped me with my bags like inside. And I go in and it was like this like whole other world. I was like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Like, I was just like, like flabbergasted. That is so cool. And then, and I just like couldn't even believe that this was my life. And at that time, I thought that I was only gonna get paid once. And then the next Thursday, I got paid again. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. For real. In any case, that was a defining moment. Like I knew that at that point, <clears throat> I had made it. Do you, do you ever struggle with the concern like, like or, or are you at a point where you're, like your faith is consistent in the sense of like, okay, I'm not sure that this is going to sustain or like, no, I'm definitely, I'm on the road. This is going kind of thing. Yeah. I think, I think the transition between my first and my second show was probably like the most testing time in my life because, you know, a lot of people like to say that, you know, the success is making it right. And in a lot of ways, like I just said, like it is the defining moment, but inside of that, I realized that like a more challenging thing that you have to do sustain a hundred couldn't agree more with that it is that, that that is the biggest defining thing especially like you know now we're talking music for a sec one one hit wonders and sustaining careers you know what i mean absolutely it's one thing to to make it for a minute but to make a career is a completely different thing and they talk a lot about that with with um sophomore albums with artists it's like cool you can have a great first album but the true pressure the true defining moment is if the second album is going to be a hit Absolutely. Absolutely. I would, I would highly agree with that. That is, yeah. that's a, that's a great point. So when that finally happened and that show was on your feet, which is the story of Gloria and Emilio Estefan, they, I mean, that, that show didn't come out until 2015. Mm-hmm. So like I did, I did in the high school 2009. I did the national tour 2010, 2012, 11-ish, 12. And then from there, I moved to LA. And from 2012 to 2015, I was without a job. So like, that's that. It just is what it is. But I don't, I don't, I don't even feel like I have to say anything more than that. Like that, those are those are the testing times that sure. as an artist, like you, you find out like who you are. hundred percent. If you're gonna st- <clears throat> persevere through it or not. Yeah, and Absolutely. then like my return, my my quote unquote return to like Broadway, like I ended up going to like an, another open call, and that turned out completely different from in the Heights. It like didn't land the job that time. They were interested and they put me on 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 the notes. But so when I got to New York, I auditioned a second time. And then the second time I ended up getting the job. So, you know, that wasn't guaranteed. Mm-hmm. And that was a perfect combination of like, it's, it's a complete opposite um, story as in the Heights. Like now I knew people. So it was like my relationships that I had solidified, plus the talent, plus the timing, plus the preparation. Sure. Absolutely. And then, and then once, it, once on your feet happened, 
like I got re-encouraged. And so like everything else started to unfold. And then all of a sudden television started happening for me. And then it just like, it changed everything. That is super interesting. And and like that re-encouragement is actually pretty fascinating. Like you, you need that like moment that like, kind of like, you know, nod kind of thing. It's like, okay, this is going to work out. And then you kind of, that encourages it to you to go for the next stuff. I love sorry, it. Caleb. So, sorry, Jacob. There's no way around it because he um, is in school, but he didn't. I told him that Nino was gonna be on on camera, but just say hi really quickly, Caleb. Hi. Hold on. Let me uh-huh. get Caleb in the uh, in the shot. We gotta move this over a little bit. What's okay, going on, Monty. Caleb? Caleb, what's going on? How are you? How is school? <laughs> How was school, Tiquito? It went good. It went good. He said. Uh, I was playing Splash. We're gonna go buy him. We're gonna go get him a tablet at Best Buy. Oh, so well. nice. But, but after, but after Nino's done with his interview, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, little one. I'll, I'll be right there. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up in a second. One, one of the final questions that I have for you is, um, so I'm curious that the, the dynamic on set, whether it be on stage or on a movie set, how much interaction is there between like the A-listers and like, you know, the people that are more in the background? I'm curious, like, is are they like kind of off on their own thing or like does everybody kind of intermingle? So, you know, there is no like straightforward answer to that. But what I will say based upon my experience and specifically within the Heights, I think it's because like having a prior, like a working relationship with Anthony Ramos um, leading up to in the Heights, you know, when I, when I got the job, we were able to, I was celebrating that, like his, that accomplishment for him. And he received me and, and celebrated my accomplishment of getting the film as well. So we had already developed the rapport. Mm. Leslie, Leslie Grace, who played Nina, like she, you know, while while I was in Miami, I, I went a period working for a Latin television network named called Univision. And so inside of that, um, yo, um, inside of that, pretty much um, uh, 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 she had her U.S. debut and I was her lead dancer in that. And then fast forward, I wouldn't see her until 10 years later. So when I got to the first day of rehearsal, she was getting out of her Uber. <laughs> so it's almost like the same vibe. Like like she like we recognize each other. We already knew each other. And then after that, like, like you let, you let them do their process. You let them have their, like, their, we're all, they're working. Sure. So most of the other people that were in the space, like, um, Corey and, um, uh, and Melissa Barrera, um, these, these were, these were, uh, uh, heads that I was just meeting. So, you know, by nature, if you don't know anybody, like it's, it's going to be a little bit more, sure. more, more, uh, time, but like Corey's a stand up guy, like he's really personable. Melissa was like so open and she was like in the mix with us dancing. So it was really easy to get to know her, mm. but you know, the same principle applies. Like, like if you know the actor, it's a little different. Um, and also it really depends on how the producers or how the shooting of mm. the film, like includes dancers. Sure. Um, so if it, if it is a more like inclusive vibe of everything, then, you know, you have, you have the uh, opportunity to, um, you know, have a better, uh, um, social interaction with the actors. Absolutely. But if, if it's something that's a little bit more closed, which I like a lot less, um, then, you know, sometimes you don't ever even talk to the actors and all of a sudden you're like in a scene with them and then like they just like do their thing and then like you're, you just go back to you being watermelon number four. And I don't know why it's a, why it's a watermelon. I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that, is, that a, <laughs> like a, is that a reference, like an industry term or are you just mess it around? It's because my mom has two watermelon oh. pillows. And I think it's on my uh, hey man, so, I don't know any of it. You, you could have fooled me. So, but nah, I wish that that'd be, that'd be, that'd be kind of <laughs> the last question that I have for you before we wrap it up is: I, I, I want to first of all say thank you so much for taking the time. It was a pleasure chatting. It was a oh, lot man. of fun. Thanks, thanks for having me. I, learned, yeah. I first personally yeah. learned a lot, so I hope the people that have been watching and the people that watch after the fact uh, awesome. enjoy it also. Awesome. But how can the people it. that are watching now and then watching the future? How can they best support you and what you're up to these days? All right, so everybody out there that's interested in learning more, a little bit more about me, you can find me on Instagram at Life of Jose Luis. Links in on there. description. The link is in the description. You already know. <laughs> uh, so that's the best way to, for people to support you and what you're up to these days. Hey. Yeah, I don't really do. I don't really do Twitter. I definitely don't do TikTok. <laughs> so in, Instagram is the best place to find me. Like I, I, I pretty much am an open book on there. You should I love do sharing. Inst- yeah. like you should do one minute tutorials, two step tutorials. Come on, on TikTok, on TikTok, and then I could, and then I could, I could subscribe, follow you on TikTok and learn how to dance, man. <laughs> TikTok. Hey, you uh, never know. You never, you never know. know. I'll, I'll consider. It, I'll consider it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I want to say, uh, if you could just hang out for two seconds, I want to say thank you so much to everybody that did watch this, now made it to the end of the stream. You guys are the true ones that made it to the end of, the end of these videos. And if you watch it after the fact, thank you so much for taking the time. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Definitely go check out the link in the description, which is uh, his Instagram right there. So, And uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.